Hello there, it is I, the Geordie Nerd, and I am back again with another episode of South Park, Season 4, Episode 14, Pip. That's the little English boy, isn't it? Um, yeah. Uh, okay. <laughs> I don't know if I've got anything else to say in regards to that. Um, 25 seconds of waffle, there we go. So, I mean, between 8 and 15 seconds, you can't see any curse words, and then you can only have so many in an episode, so... But I, I don't think South Park's bad for curse words, even though every video gets limited and I have to rev get them to review it and they, they basically say it was fine, but whatever. Anyway, yeah, um, Patreon link down below. Uh, if you want to become a member of the YouTube channel, you'll get the edited versions early. And um, yeah, uh, some other videos that I'll do for members only and stuff. Um, yeah, let's just get this now and have some fun. Ah, Dickens. The imagery of cobblestone streets, craggy London buildings, and nutmeg-filled Yorkshire puddings. Hello, I'm a British person. <laughs> However, many Americans don't realize where Pip came from. He's the prowling, adorable little Englishman from Charles Dickens' timeless classic, Great Expectations. So this is, this is something that's happening. Our story is set in England, in the small town of Draftshire upon Topsmart, where a young blonde haired boy named Pip was on his way to see his parents. I love how, uh, is it London, did he say? Well, or the UK, in anyway, it looks so bleak. Hello, Mum. Hello, Dad. It should be as nice to see you again. <laughs> Don't worry, sister. <laughs> Here, let me help you. What are you doing with those? I'm an apprentice blacksmith. There you are. And here's a sandwich. You must be starving. Did did Pip have a tail there? Pip, where have you been? What? A lovely day, isn't it? What the hell's lovely about it? Joe takes this boy some <laughs> bloody cynicism. Oh, I don't know about that. Hey, not all of us British people have big monkey noses with spots and horrible teeth. I mean, I do. But not all of us, probably. Enough. Why are you making some bloody <laughs> Burning nightingale droppings, you metal pounding fairy! And you, why don't you get a job? You're eight years old now! <laughs> so that's very British. You're eight, get in the coal mines! Havisham resident seeks young boy to play with lonely daughter. I've come to answer the one dad. Is that so, you smelly little bastard? <laughs> <What>? <laughs> That is how us British people speak to each other, to be fair. Does it frighten you to look upon a woman who has not seen the sun in over 20 years? Oh, no, no. You, you sort of look upon women who have not seen the sun for over 20 years quite a lot. They yeah, I was going to say, there's a lot of people who have never seen the sun in, in, uh, in the UK. That night, Pip spent all his sleeping hours unable to get Estella's beautiful face out of his mind. Stop dreaming about me, you slow-witted rectal belch. <laughs> I think she likes him as well. You there, the prowling little boy. I bet you can't jump on my back. Go on then, try and jump on my back. Who is that? Just another playmate hired to amuse me. You didn't think you were the only one, did you? Oh, I rather thought I was. Oh, you silly small testicled boy. Come, let us... Oh, poor Pip's been cooked. Pip found himself more in love with a little girl each and every day. Oh, bless him. Isn't he lovely? But isn't it sad? because Pip knew that someone as sophisticated and as wealthy as Estella could never love him, for he was just a simple blacksmith's apprentice. He, he was a peasant-like, to be fair. Uh, so, yeah, what's all this, Pip? Joe, do you know anything about girls? Sure! They're those things with vaginas in them. <laughs> I mean, he's not wrong. Heaven forbid I should stand in the way of Pip's future, but... He will one day inherit a handsome property, but the owner of that property wants him first to travel to London and learn to be a gentleman. That's great news! There needs to lick a pig's taint, just like my friends David, and I am Boris Johnson. I mean, apparently that's what happened. If you keep up politics, so someone licked a pig's taint or something. Mr. Pip? Mr. Pocket? Pray come in. Thank you kindly. You look rather familiar. As do you. Perhaps we've seen each other before. As to our lodging, it's not by any means splendid. This is our sitting room, just chairs and tables and carpet and so forth. This is my little bedroom, rather musty. And this is your bedroom. My, how lovely. Oh, what a gay time we shall have. And I do mean gay as in festive, not as in penetration of the bomb. Oh, but dear me, <laughs> oh. I beg your pardon, you're holding your bags all this time. Pray let me take them, I'm quite ashamed. Oh, it's, 
Yeah, it's very British for you to to basically, you know, apologise for your house even though it looks fine. I do apologise about the mess. There's like a cop in the kitchen. I'm thoroughly ashamed. The time when she stopped all the clocks in the house. But afterwards she laid waste to the entire house, as you have seen it, and has never since looked upon the light of day. And the story ends, Pip, with me suggesting that one should never pull out that wee-wee and check it for scabs whilst at the table. Terribly sorry, thank <laughs> Not at all, I'm sure. And so Wait. No. I thought you were allowed to do that at the table. Love her, don't you, Pip? I don't know. I mean, I think about her every day. Do you know what love is, Pip? Pain. It is blind devotion. Pain. Unquestioning self-humiliation. Utter submission. Trust and belief against yourself and against the whole world. Giving up your whole heart and soul to smit her. right -o. Love her, Pip. I developed her into what she is so that she might be loved. Yeah. I love how all the adult's teeth are yellow. Mine, mine are white. I brush mine. Miss Havisham, you have to talk to Estella. She's going out the... Well, 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 if it isn't Mr. Pip. Miss Havisham, but I... Don't they make a handsome couple, Pip? I mean, I get it. She had her heart broken, so she's trying to do that to other people. But why? Someone has a hold of my heart and is squeezing it very tightly. Yes, and it is somewhat difficult to breathe. Hey, wait a second. You mean that this whole thing was just a setup by your mom? Is your heart broken as well? Tell me all about it. But why do you make your daughter hurt people? Why? Well, that's simple. Because I need the tears of broken-hearted men to use in my Genesis device. <laughs> of course. What the... And as for you, Pip, my robot monkey should take care of you. I mean, I can't remember this happening in the original, so they, they do have it bang on. Miss Havisham! She has all the men who have had their hearts broken by Estella trapped in her house. Oh, why would she have wasted all that time sending me to school and turning me into a gentleman? Well, about that, Pip, there's another person who wants to see you. Hello, Pip. You remember me? The one you, you rescued. You weren't a snob and you helped me like you would a rich man. Oh, dear. All this time I thought it was Miss Havisham. She totally let me believe it. I tried to tell you, Pip, she's a vengeful, spiteful woman and wanted nothing more than to see you hurt along with the rest of the male sex. Well, I... Very 2023, that, isn't it? <laughs> Ooh, social commentary! <laughs> Miss Havisham's robot monkeys prove a formidable foe, but Pip is not about to let Estella's soul be forever consumed by the Genesis device. And now, the thrilling conclusion of Great Expectations. Should we in this episode shite expectations, because it's shite. Come, Estella, you can't want to be part of this. It is what I was raised for. Hello, gentlemen. Oh, whatever you do, please do not cry. Havisham's device fuels well, That British man, British man don't cry. Well, in public, anyway. Oh, my. He's very cute. You see that? A heartless person wouldn't care at all about this bunny. They'd just as soon break its neck. Okay, she's a monster, so you can't date her. She just killed a bunny. Right, let's not talk about stamp collecting, then. Let's talk about... Ice skating. Oh, what fun ice skating is. Mate... My step stepdad's friend got his um, fingers cut off while ice skating. Now we can begin our life together. Yes, yes, my small testicle love. Oh, I'm so glad everything has worked out. Where are all my little bunnies that you borrowed then, Pip? And they all oh, live what? happily ever after. Except for Pocket, who died of hepatitis B. So ends Charles Dickens' Great Expectations. We hope you now have a deeper appreciation for Pip and indeed all masterpieces of literature like this one. Until next time, I'm a British person. Good night. Um, so that that was an episode that happened on purpose. Uh, I mean, the, the funny little British stuff at the start got us. But uh, yeah, that happened. Um... Is this the worst episode of South Park? Maybe. I mean, it wasn't great, but I still enjoyed it. I laughed. I had a good time, sort of. I just did not know why they chose to do this. They could have literally made an episode about Cartman wearing flip-flops or sandals and refusing to take them off. And Mr. Garrison shot a dog. There you go, there's a better episode right there. It writes itself. Wow. Anyway. <laughs>
yeah, thanks for watching. Uh, since this isn't getting many views, I'll see you all again very soon for more South Park reaction videos.